Welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. I'm Bill Jelen. Well, I was having a discussion on Facebook with Rick, one of our viewers. He says, hey, I'm relatively new to Excel. I hear you talking about VBA. I roughly understand what it means, but I have no idea where it is, how to get started. And really, uh, the best thing to do is to uh, use the macro recorder. Now, uh, here I have a data set, and this is mocked up from a data set that I saw on the road. And one of the worst data sets I've ever seen. I, I couldn't believe that someone would actually build a data set like this. They basically take up three physical rows in Excel for every logical record. And the one that just I could not believe is that if the customer name was long, the software vendor put the first part of the customer name in cell, in this case B6, and the rest of it in B7, splitting it up between two different cells. Uh, you know, I just I couldn't believe this. And I don't want to out the software vendor who would do something that's stupid, but let's just say it rhymes with schmoracle. Okay, so if someone's getting this data set every day, and it's just horrible to deal with. Uh, you know, you would have to do a lot of fixing. And so we said, well, let's record a macro to solve this. So we go to the very first date field, Tools, Macro, Record New Macro. I'll call it Fix One Record. Now, no spaces in the macro name. Shortcut key, I'm going to reuse Control A just because it's easy to hit Control A. And if this is a one time thing, we'd store it in this workbook. But if it's something that we have to do every single day, we're getting this file every day, I would store it in the personal macro workbook and not reuse Control A. I'd use one of the unused shortcut keys like J or K or maybe Control Shift A that doesn't already have a use. So we click OK. And the most important thing you want to do is to come here to the Stop Recording Toolbar. And the second button is called Relative Reference. You want to turn that on. If you don't turn it on, the macro is going to be hard coded to only deal with the record that occurs in rows 2, 3, and 4. But by turning on Relative Reference, we make sure that uh, the macro kind of understands conceptually that it's dealing with the three rows near where the cell pointer started when we started recording the macro. So now at this point, the macro recorder is on, and I'm going to go through and fix one record. I'm going to take the date over to the right spot, the product to column K, the quantity to column L. Now, I built these headings up here before I started to record the macro, um, just that way I had a guide for where I'm going to paste these fields. I'm going to take these three items, revenue, cost of goods sold, and profit, copy and then edit paste special and choose transpose to turn those on their side. Now, this incredibly silly customer thing, I've never seen anyone actually end up with a data set like this. I'm going to build a formula here equal B2 ampersand B3 and then copy that formula, control C and paste values, edit paste special values, click OK. And then just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to navigate back to where we started and then down to the next record. That way we're ready to run the macro again. So I click Stop, and we'll do a little test here. I'll press Control A, and I check and see that sure enough, it did put the customer name back together. All the fields seem to be where they need to be, and I'm on the next date. So now I'm just going to hold down Control A, and you'll see that we'll fix all these records very, very quickly. So, you know, even if they sent me 100 records that were all screwed up like this, I could basically uh, just hold down Control A and fix the problem in you know 30 seconds instead of having to go through manually and put all those customer names back together. Of course, once we get this data now, I'm going to sort to make sure I get rid of the uh, blank rows. Um, and frankly, that's something that I'm going to do manually each day uh, just because I never know how many records I'm going to have. Now, I could deal with that if I wanted to switch over to VBA, but you know, as Rick said, hey, I'm new. I don't want to deal with VBA. I just want to understand how to write a macro. And so when we write that macro using the macro recorder. Basically, I take the things that are going to work, macroize those, and then at the end, I just have to do a little sort and at the beginning, um, put the headings up there and we're good to go. So, Rick, there you go. Hopefully, a nice introduction to recording macros. A couple of rules, make sure to always turn on relative reference and then, uh, you know, test the macro uh, on a saved version of the file. So, that way, in case something goes wrong, you can always go back and uh, use the other version again. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.